Hello friends, welcome to the video lecture series on digital image processing. I am Dr. Dafra and in this 50th video class of DIP, we will study edge linking and boundary detection, half transform and its implementation in MATLAB. See edge linking means joining the edges. In the previous video class, we saw how to detect the edges but there may be breaks in the edges that we detect and hence they need to be joined. And half transform is a global method of edge linking that was presented by Huff in 1962. So let us start. In the previous video class, we saw that the gradient operators like Robert, Sobel, Previtt, Laplacian of Gaussian, etc. enhance the edges. But when we implement these filters practically, there are usually breaks in lines. And due to this reason, these are generally followed by linking procedures to assemble edge pixels into meaningful edges. So this is the figure that we saw in the previous video class. Here the horizontal lines or edges are detected as we can see here and the vertical lines and edges are detected. Okay, But it may happen that after detecting both, there may be breaks in between the lines. So these edges which are disjoint needs to be linked and that is known as edge linking. So for our input image, we have to apply the gradient operator for edge detection. After that, we have to apply edge linking to obtain a good image. So for this edge linking, there are two basic approaches, local processing and global processing. So local processing is the simplest approach for linking pixels in a small neighborhood. And for global processing via the Huff transform, we attempt to link edge pixels that lie on specified curves. The Huff transform is designed to detect lines using the parametric representation of a line. Local processing is a simple method for edge linking. Suppose for this box, these two edges are disjoint and these are the edges that needs to be linked. So simplest method is consider this neighborhood of pixels and check whether they share some common properties. And these common properties are the strength or magnitude of the gradient and the direction of the gradient that we have learned in the previous video class. Say this pixel is x comma y and this pixel is s comma t. So the pixels s, t and x, y are similar and linked if these conditions are satisfied. That is magnitude of gradient st minus magnitude of gradient xy should be less than or equal to some particular positive threshold. And similarly, the direction angle should be less than or equal to some positive angle threshold. So if both these conditions are satisfied, then only pixel st and pixel xy will be linked. Otherwise, they will not be linked. These are the algorithm steps for local processing. Now, what is the disadvantage of this local processing? This local processing is expensive. Why? Because a record has to be kept of all linked points. For example, assigning a different label to every set of linked points. So, computationally, it is very expensive. So, better solution is global processing via Huff transform. This figure shows the example of local processing. This is our input image. This is the GY component of the gradient and this is the GX component of the gradient and the result of edge linking is like this which completes the edge detection process. Next is global processing via the Huff transform and Huff transform has emerged as a method of choice for pixel linking and edge detection. It is a very powerful global method for detecting edges. Given a set of discrete pixels, the Huff transform checks if these points lie on a straight line and if yes it draws a line joining all these points let us suppose that we are looking for straight lines in an image starting with one point say we take a point x dash y dash then all lines that pass through this x dash y dash have the form y is equal to mx plus c that is y dash is equal to mx dash plus c for different values of m and c but this is not the only line that pass through x dash y dash there may be number of other infinite lines like this that may be passing through this x dash y dash and therefore we transform this x dash y dash point of the x y plane into a line in the mc plane. So as large number of lines are passing through this single point, let us take this single point to the another space which is known as the parameter space or the half space or the MC space. How to do that? We can write the same equation in this manner making C as the main part of the equation. C is equal to taking M X dash on the other side. It will become negative. So minus X dash M plus Y dash. So now what will we do? Now we will consider X dash and Y dash to be constants and M and C as varying. But we know that this is the equation of the straight line, right? So the points X dash Y dash will become a straight line in the parameter space or half space or MC space. This is a straight line on the graph of C against M and 
each different line through the point x dash y dash corresponds to one of the points on the line in MC space. Let us understand this with one example. Let us say 1 comma 2 is some point in x y space. So x is 1 and y is 2. So this point is 1 comma 2. We need to transfer this point from the x y space to the m c space or the half space. Right. So x y is equal to 1 comma 2. The equation of line is y is equal to m x plus c. For the half space we will write c is equal to minus m x plus y. Therefore c is equal to minus m x is 1 plus 2. Therefore c will be equal to minus m plus 2. Now if c is equal to 0 in this equation m will be equal to 2 and if m is equal to 0 c will be equal to 2. So the point 1 comma 2 of the xy space will be a line passing through m is equal to 2 and c is equal to 2 in the mc space or the parameter space. This is the mc space or parameter space and m is 2 and c is also equal to 2 and this is that line which is passing through it. Okay. So we have converted this point 1 comma 2 of xy space into a line in the mc space okay now let us take one more point in this xy space and uh, check whether it can be linked with this point so say this another point is uh, x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 4 so for the edge linking we need to link these two points and we humans from visual characteristics can see that yes uh, these two are passing through a common line and can be linked together right but the computer cannot do this directly okay and that is the reason why we are passing this point to the half space okay so again for point 3 comma 4 we will find the values of c and m which comes out to be m is equal to 1.33 and c is equal to 4 so it is a line that is passing through m is equal to 1.33 and c is equal to 4 so when we draw a straight line between 1.33 to 4 it will coincide the earlier line at point 1 comma 1 so let us say that this first point is point a and this second point is point b so if points a and b are two points that are connected by a line in the spatial domain or the xy space they will be intersecting lines in the hub space as shown here okay so if they are intersecting in the hub space that means they are connected by a line in the spatial domain and both the points can be linked. Also you can say that the points A and B are collinear points. And now for this value of intersecting point, if you keep the values in the equation y is equal to mx plus c, y equals mx plus c. So the value of y comes out to be 2 which proves that the calculations are correct. So y is equal to 4 right. So this value is also correct. So in this way you can cross verify the results which you are obtaining in the half space. I hope it is clear. The same things are explained in uh, this slide. Taking this one step further all the pixels which lie on the same line in xy space are represented by lines which all pass through a single point in mc space and the single point through which they all pass gives the values of m and c in the equation of the line y is equal to mx plus c so for detecting straight lines we follow these steps and one useful property of the half transform is that the pixels which lie on the line need not all be contiguous for example all of the pixels lying on the two dotted lines in this figure will be recognized as lying on the same straight line so this can be very useful when trying to detect lines with short breaks in them due to noise or when objects are partially obstructed. So this box is obstructed by this box and this will be linked as a same straight line. But on the other hand it can also give misleading results when objects happen to align by chance as shown by the two dotted lines. So here both these boxes are different. So this should not be connected. So indeed this clearly shows one disadvantage of Huff transform method is that it gives an infinite line as expressed by the pair of m and c values rather than a finite line segment with two well defined endpoints. So one practical detail is that y is equal to mx plus c form representing a straight line breaks down for vertical lines when m becomes infinite. So that is the disadvantage. So what is the solution for that? The solution for that is rather than using xy coordinate we will use the polar coordinates which is given by x cos theta plus y sin theta is equal to rho or r. So to avoid this problem, it is better to use the alternative formulation x cos theta plus y sin theta is equal to r as a means of describing straight lines. But now the point in the xy space is represented or will be represented by a curve like this in the rho theta or r theta space rather than a straight line. Otherwise, the method is unchanged.
and the half transform can be used to detect other shapes in an image as well as the straight lines such as circles parabola etc so now this rho theta will be our parameter space and this parameter space is subdivided into accumulator cells as shown here so here theta minimum theta maximum rho minimum and rho maximum are the expected ranges of slope and intercept values so for example these are five points one two three four and five in the half space using polar coordinates this will be represented as curves as shown here so as one is at the origin one is present here two is this curve three is this curve four is this below curve and five is this lowest curve and this is the intersection of the curves corresponding to point one three and five it is one three and five this is the intersection point for one and four and this is the intersection point corresponding to point two three and Four. and similarly this will be the intersection point for points 2 and 5 the theoretical concepts are explained in this slide as well as this slide and these are the steps for half transform so this figure shows the example of half transform this is an aerial image of an airport this is the edge detected image obtained using canis detector this is the half parameter space consisting of curves these are the lines in the image corresponding to the points highlighted in the boxes and these are the lines which are superimposed on the original image let us implement this half transform in matlab so this program shows the matlab code for half transform we are reading an image and we are rotating it and cropping it little bit for better understanding and we are finding the edge using the canny edge detector and then we are computing the half transform let us run the program and see the output so this is our original image which we have rotated and cropped little bit this is the half transform and we can see the curves in the rho theta space and these are the peaks in the transform that are highlighted by these white boxes and this is the final output image with highlighted lines so here we can see that there is actual break in the line that is also presented as break in the line and here there is a contiguous line here as well as here that is shown as a contiguous line or a continuous line in the output image so that is all for this video class i hope you would have gained a good knowledge from this video lecture Thank you very much.